Managing Director at Zero Energy Design. We're based here in Boston, and uh, our expertise spans the fields of architecture, engineering, and finance. We use this diverse team to take a holistic and a calculated approach to design high-performance homes. So why homes? Uh, they're the most common building type in the U.S., and if we look at energy use by sector, our homes and our residential buildings are, are taking up 22% of, of the pie. Um, now, it, existing homes are definitely a, a primary culprit, um, but new construction is the low-hanging fruit. Uh, and there's a, a great opportunity to uh, build our new homes uh, in, in a way that we can target this uh, sort of idea of building as power plant or a zero energy building or a zero net energy building. Um, exactly what is that opportunity? If we look back to sort of the housing heyday back in 2009, we were uh, at a, a peak of about 2 million housing starts per year. Last year, in 2010, we were at uh, 590K, up from a low of 550k in 2009. So we're already trending upwards in, in terms of new homes. And what I'm going to talk about uh, tonight certainly applies to, to retrofits as, as well, um, but the, the new construction is, is it's really easy. So I'm going to use a 3,000 square foot home here in the Boston climate uh, with about, let's say, 1,500 square foot of basement space built to the building code uh, to use as a demonstration to show the path to zero. Um, and again, that's zero net energy, which is using as much energy as you, excuse me, producing as much energy as you, you use over the course of a year. Um, and then, of course, there's the, the possibility of, of positive energy, which is, is producing more than you use. I'll let you all envision what this house looks like. Um, but it does start with design. Uh, it starts with right-sizing a home. If you are reducing the square footage that you thought you needed, you're not only conserving cost, but you're uh, conserving energy as well. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to design. You know, we, we can look at optimizing the, the form of the building, the orientation, this business on, on the site. These are all big things that can have a great influence on performance as well. So we start with this 3,000 square foot home, and it's using about $7,000 a year in annual utility costs. Now, if that were all electric, we'd be looking at about a 31 kilowatt array of, of solar panels, of PV. It's a little bit of a problem for a number of reasons. The first is logistical. It's about four times your roof area, so if you even have a backyard, you'd be looking at something like this um, to, to get that, that array size. Um, not to mention the upfront cost of about maybe $250,000 if you were to pay for the panels outright. So this path to zero is not about plastering your homes with solar panels or just putting up wind turbines. It's, it's really about efficiency. It's about 80% efficiency and 20% renewables. So how do we get there? The first step is to address the building envelope. And especially in a cold climate like Boston, this is huge. If we have a well-insulated and airtight building, we can, one, keep the precious heat that we do produce, we can keep it inside. And we can use our south-facing windows to capture free heat and keep that heat again inside. So if we start with the basement, uh, we have to insulate it. If you don't, it's kind of like going outside in the winter without your socks on. Then we can look at the walls and the roof and double the amount of insulation that's required. And coming back to that airtight construction, uh, we don't want to just lose our heat, uh, lose that heat that we're producing and the heat that we're capturing. We want to keep it inside, and so we need to look at an envelope that's, that's airtight. And, you know, we're, we're now, we're, we're at 20 kilowatts. We're still at two and a half times 
this available roof area, we're headed in the right direction. So now we can look at the systems. Maybe we install a high efficiency condensing boiler, perhaps it's a high efficiency furnace uh, to get, you know, produce our heat efficiently. We're also going to introduce mechanical ventilation. If you think of your home as a body, a leaky home is going to breathe through your elbows, your fingers, your toes. It's, it's out of control. But with an airtight house, we have mechanical ventilation. And it's kind of like breathing through your nose and mouth. You have this one point where you can control what comes in, what goes out, how much, how frequently. It's a great system. So now we've got airtight, we've got good insulation, we've upgraded the windows as well. And we have a system that breathes in a predictable way. So better still, we're, we're at 17 kilowatts. Now we can look at the hot water system, high efficiency hot water heater. If you've got a boiler in your house, maybe you're now drawing off that boiler to, to get your super efficient uh, hot water. We can look at lighting and appliances, Energy Star, doing away with your incandescent uh, light bulbs. Again, an, another great step, but we're still not there yet. So now let's take another look at that hot water. Maybe we introduced a solar thermal system. It's actually going to have probably a better payback than, than the PV on the roof. Um, and so, you know, that's getting us closer still. Now, now that green bar really stands out on the graph, the uh, appliances and lighting. It's now taking up 77% of our annual energy use. That's crazy. So, you know, one thing that this is assuming thus far is typical American use of a house. You can be wasteful. So, the, there isn't really a, um, a zero energy home, but I think that there is a zero energy user. And so we're going to say that with operating the house efficiently, and maybe making even better choices about our lighting and appliances, not going to Energy Star, but going a little bit better, um, we can actually reduce that down to 50%. So now we've gotten to a place that's reasonable. We've got a 7 kilowatt array on the roof. It's only taking up 90% of the, the roof area, which is great because I already stuck a solar thermal panel up there for the hot water. And we have something that's, that's realistic. Now, I want to come back to design because when, when we look at the performance of, of a home that's insulated to, to this level and, and performing at this level, we can see upwards of a 40 to 60 percent difference in heat demand when we look at design. So if we take a house that's already been optimized for uh, you know, maximizing the, the south-facing glazing, minimizing east, west, and north, we see a 40 to 60 percent increase when we just spin that house around on the site to, to go the wrong way. And uh, that's, again, it's, it's sort of where you need to start is with the design and, and it's what you need to come back to as well. So even if you don't put those renewables on, you're still at a 77 percent reduction in uh, annual energy use, which is a huge step in the right direction. And you can go back to thinking about some things like what's your house. Thank you.